control things. Many other teams uh, want to get involved because they do not have an out-and-out -out sprinter, and that's why we're starting to see the counter-attacks. Yeah, Kofidis uh, wanted to be part of this. Uh, Johan Bego, Roman Ardi as well can go at distance. Um, I think that is Danny McClay. He's quite a rangy character uh, that's just kicking on. The British rider from Brennan Session, Vera Mantal, will have to go uh, a little bit further down, but others want to join the party. Yeah, from said that you thought about it, but uh, straight onto the wheel, AG2R still there. So we've seen a battle between a lot of the French teams now. The Breton Sesh rider and Cofferis have been brought back. One rider from Eurocar comes to the front, tries to keep the tempo up. Still 45 seconds for the young man from Colombia. But there's uh, two riders in between, Berard and Yul Jensen. Is that uh, Gauthier that's just kicking off again? It was Danny McClay, by the way. Um, long, rangy figure. He is uh, the Brit. Great rider for Breton Session, Vera Mantel. Good test for him at that point, but uh, just joined by too many riders he didn't fancy riding along with. 15 to go, and there they look over, and that's always a great sign if you are a chaser, uh, and not a great one if you happen to be up the road, and he has been for most of the day, and this is Danny Martinez, just 19 years of age. Uh, we were wondering if it'd be a breakout performance by him. He's certainly got the King of the Mountains jersey tomorrow, and he still kicks on and tries to hold off the chasers. And right now there are two of them that are on his case, Julian Berra and Jul Jensen from Tinkoff Saxo. pace up and uh, it is a technical run in we remind you this is a downhill run just for now it does kick up and crests and then goes down again before we uh, pick up towards the end the very last and in fact at the very last the last 500 meters uh, there's a little bit of a step before they reach a, a plateau and the run for the line uh, we remind you it doesn't actually straighten out the road until about 350 meters to go and unfortunately uh, for uh, Danny Martinez it looks all done and dusted, 14 seconds only, and indeed there's a proper pace about the chasers with teams with uh, proper sprinters trying to get themselves ready to race. And right now, these are the chasers, and in fact it's 25 seconds he's got Martinez back to the pack. Yeah, and the pack are uh, trying to be controlled from uh, Eurocar, very difficult now to control that peloton. Everybody now, the, the race has already started, they're just waiting for that uh, final King of the Mountains. Um, so a lot of the teams have been sat back all day today in the first stage of the route to the 39th edition of this race. 204 kilometres have now come up to the front, want to get involved with the race. And it's uh, Britain Sesh, Movistar, Colt Energy uh, up towards the front of the peloton. Uh, Cofidis on behalf of Venturi have come up in their red jerseys, as you can see, and they're uh, mobbing the road at the moment. And uh, the motorcycle's being told to get out of there because, uh, to be honest, this man could go quicker through here. Uh, he's being held up by the motorcycles. Go away, he says. That's a nightmare at a situation like this. Yeah, just got caught out uh, a little bit, and you just see the... Uh the referee is trying to usher on these bikes, but it's Yul Jensen uh, really trying to uh, put the pressure on. He's looking behind. He uh, wants to try and take Berard with him, two better than one. And uh, they can just see just in front of them Martinez, the young Colombian. But uh, Yul Jensen trying to uh, to surprise the peloton. Uh, the peloton now being led still by Europe Car. Difficult to uh, run in, small, lumpy, you know, heavy roads all the way in towards the finish now. Yep, yeah, uh, it's a shame, to be honest. He got uh, uh, caught by the, or he caught the motorcycles there, uh, just knocking his uh, cadence and his pace. And in fact, uh, this TV bike needs to get a little bit further away, although it's probably offering him a bit of assistance at the moment, erroneously. Uh, two chases then at the moment, but as you can see, the pack are coming and they're starting to rock and roll. And uh, Zvendegaard is out of the saddle for Cult Energy and on a chase down right now. And that's a big name. Oh, there we are. We, uh, we, we have a look further back as well. Uh, attempts being made and then neutralised almost as a constant. Yeah, this is Alex Dowsett with uh, Linus Gerdeman trying to go across and it was shut down very quickly. And notice right towards the front and fourth wheel there was Alberto Contador. It was Gerdeman, not Svendegaard out front with Alex Dowsett as well, just uh, um, pacing himself. We know that he can go very long when he needs to. Uh, will he be allowed to today? He's, uh, he's on looking after duties for Quintana, perhaps, or maybe Quintana's uh, not overly concerned about this particular title and is just riding himself back in and wants to measure himself only in the mountains, which will mean that the likes of Dowsett could have a chance today. Uh, but I think it's going to be pure sprinters by the end. We'll see 11.6 kilometres to go and uh, Martinez 
uh, just struggling to stay with these guys who've got much fresher legs than he, and away they go. Yeah, Yu Jensen is the strongest in this uh, group. Martinez has now been <coughs> distant, sorry. Uh, Berard's just trying to hang on to him. So the 27-year-old Frenchman trying to hang on to uh, Yu Jensen. Well, it's all breaking down behind, as you can see, and Colombia now have uh, a, a, a designs on teeing themselves up for a sprint finish. Leonardo Duque is a, a pocket rocket, and he tries to join the fun right now. And here we are. He'll sail by his uh, teammate, Danny Martinez. He's now been caught by the pack, uh, having uh, seen two riders just uh, stretch themselves and bridge over. Yul Jensen, one of those, and Julian Berard from AG2 Le Mondial. But now it's starting to get a bit selective. Yeah, it's and uh, you know it's fantastic. The race has now opened up. It was controlled for pretty much most of the day. Eurocar have kind of lost control. So many riders have been sitting in the pe peloton. Now th see riders going down the road and want to join the party. And you know this is going to be the race, the the way of the race for the, the final uh, 10 kilometres here. It's going to be like this for three of the four days. Uh, one in the mountains, but. A uh, great day for opportunists to have their fun. And I think the two men up the road, it's going to be hard to catch them. I know there's only te there's still 10.7 kilometres to go, but they've got some real power up there. Uh, that is Rubiano, by the way, for uh, Team Colombia, just second man in line at the moment, uh, being joined by uh, Jurgegi, um, <laughs> Kentan Jurgegi. <laughs> We said we were dreading him getting up here, and he's up here right now. There he is from AG2 Arle Mondial. Uh, difficult name to pronounce, but he lets his legs do the talking. Uh, Jules Jensen and Berard, and this could be two AG2 Arle Mondial riders coming together and uh, imposing themselves on this breakaway. Good kickoff by Jules Jensen. Yeah, Berard couldn't stay, and uh, the problem is they've got a rider just behind, and that's uh, Jeregi. And Jeregi should be riding. He shouldn't be sitting on. He already sees that uh, Berard has now been distant, so he's now starting to come through. Yul Jensen, as we thought, was the strongest also in here's Carl Hennig of the uh, Cult Energy team, but uh, Berard just absolutely blown now. Can't even go with the counter-attack. Ten kilometres to go now. We have got Yul Jensen in front, a group of four, and then Peloton just behind. Jauregi is there, and he sails by his teammate. Yul Jensen is out front as we stand. 9.7 to go. He's only got five seconds, uh, possibly a little less than that. Um, who is it from Kofidis in this? Just checking on the confidence rider right now. I think it's Roman Ardi. If it is, then he's uh, a handy rider for the overall. We'll see. Five seconds right now, and it looks like they've knocked it back. Mm -hmm. That gap may well just expand ever so slightly uh, with uh, teams happy that they've got riders up the road for the time being. Looking at the head of the course now with 9.5 to go. Well, Yul Jensen has managed to hold on. He's got some firepower around him right now, but uh, this is going to get busy with 9.4 to go. I think the pack, uh, once they come on the downhill run, could well have them. We will see. Um, it is uh, Rossetto for Cofidis, by the way. There's your numbers. Rubiano, also an extremely strong rider, just at the back of this group. And there, the Land Army trying to join in. We saw Julian Duval uh, trying to kick off for them and trying to kick a door in right now. The KTM boys are uh, also here. That's Team Marseille just stretching their legs, almost catching out the camera bike. It's a, it's amazing how much pace they can suddenly put in and catch out the camera sometimes. We'll just look at the distance uh, mm. in the peloton now towards the back. Yeah, a lot of riders in trouble now. No real force at the front of the peloton. And uh, you're right, Marseille getting involved, AG2R, Colombia, but they've got riders in the front group and they'll know that, so they won't want to uh, press on. Looked like one of the occult energy riders. Very difficult finish. We go around this uh, hairpin now, but uh, Eurocar, having ridden all day, have been swept away from the front of the peloton. We've got a group of uh, five riders in front, Yul Jensen, uh, Juregi, Rosetto, Rubiano, Carl Hennig is in that group. We've now got a counter-attack of three riders trying to come up to them. 22 seconds back to these riders and uh, a lot of racing still to be done. Well, it is, but they're looking at each other now and uh, just wondering who's going to take them on. Uh, Jürgen Jensen, Juregi, Hennig, uh, Rosetto and Rubiano. Five riders, 8.9 to go in 22 seconds, and they've got some strength here. Oh, definitely. We've seen the strength of Jürgen Jensen already. Uh, Rosetto for the uh, Cofidis in the uh, red. Carl Hennig, we've already mentioned him for Cult Energy, uh, winner of the Tour I was asked. 
uh, last year and uh, Rubiano for uh, Colombia and uh, this is a good five man working group 23 seconds back to the peloton with uh, one rider from AG2 and in between now. Yeah, and uh, dragging out as well, as you can see, five chases from various teams. And I think some will be regretting the way this is panning out, not least Team Europe car, who really wanted a tidy run in. It's not going to happen for them. Doesn't look like it. I'm um, just trying to look down to the peloton now to see uh, if there's any riders. In the top 20 there, there's absolutely no riders from Europe car. It's uh, difficult for them. They have been on the attack, uh, or they, uh, they have been riding in the front of the peloton all day. But I think that's uh, Brian Cocard. It's the only rider towards the front. So Europe car been swept away. And I don't think they've got actually any riders left apart from uh, Goldtier, who's at the front. So Goldtier is the rider trying to ride this AG2R rider down. But I don't think he's going to be able to ride on the front and bring back everybody for Brian Cocard to win. So a good, exciting last 10 kilometres in this race. as many riders on the attack. Yes, indeed. And, um, well, who's your pick out of these five if uh, if they're going to make it? Well, it's uh, difficult to say. I was just uh, having a, a little look at their uh, form over the last few races. Carl Hinnick in the Colt Energy is uh, probably one of the fastest riders in here, but just don't discount Yul Jensen. Uh, no, don't discount uh, Yul Jensen. Uh, did you see me underline Hinnick there in my little list? <laughs> we'll see. He is quick. He can go well. Uh, Rubiano as well um, can uh, wrestle him. If they all start looking at each other, it's going to be hard to call. Uh, these guys, um, I think Europe Car had the big option today, and it looks like they may well have messed it up. These guys are, uh, in the breakaway are capable of maintaining this gap. Um, that is uh, Yuregi, uh, just coming to the rear for AG2 Le Mondial. He's reasonably quick. Uh, Rubiano of Colombia just in front of him. Hennick, who probably starts as uh, favorite out of this uh, quintet, if they make it, number 43 uh, for Cult in the black. Uh, we also have uh, Yul Jensen out front right now for Tinkoff Saxo and uh, Rubiano Rosetto I think is the one we didn't mention just nearest to us there uh, for Kofidis so um, real firepower amongst the breakaway and unfortunately a few broken hearts back here I think yeah Linda Skedeman just policing things at the front of the peloton this gap uh, should go up there's uh, no chase at the front of the peloton now that Sarah Gautier is sat up and obviously with Yul Jensen there, Tinkoff are happy with this. Colombia in the middle are happy with it. AG2 on the left are happy with this. And, you know, Brett and Sesh decide that they want to try and do something about it. Yep, uh, they do. But what can they possibly do? I think that's Danny McClay again. Um, he's a sucker for punishment, if that is Danny, because he lit it up earlier on. Uh, just tries to change the speed. And... It, and he, in fact, just shakes the head. And uh, I'm hearing it's uh, Anthony Denaplas that's out front. So forgive me for that. There we are. 14 seconds is the gap right now with 5.8 kilometers to go. So good roads, good approach, and some real drama, especially from the 3K marker. And these guys are going to be there in 2.7. So they're rolling with the changes and doing a nice job of it. Hennick just uh, getting himself some free energy uh, on this little downhill run. It does rise and fall, a quite sinuous road, Brian, and they're out of sight of the chasers, even though it's only 15 seconds. Yeah, still a uh, touchable distance from the group behind, only 15 seconds. Uh, Carl Hennick at the back for uh, Colt Energy, the Czech rider. Rode with the ethics development team over the last couple of years, won the Tour of Alsace. Uh, won a stage of the Tour of Alsace last year, so a good rider. Comes from a cycle cross background in the under 23s, but now back to the front of the peloton, and it's Bretan Sesh. The riders with, we were said, we're speculating at the start, they've got two or three uh, sprinters, and they're the only team that's come up towards the front to try and bring these five riders back. Yeah, well, Roman Fayer is a pretty handy sprinter. Jonathan Iver, likewise. Uh, Danny McClay. Um, and in fact, uh, it is Danny McClay, I was right first time, who's out front. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I was misinformed by our production team, but, uh, yeah, Danny McClay, or misguided, uh, guided away from the truth. It's Danny McClay out front with 4.6 kilometres to go at, uh, of the chasers, I'll remind you. Uh, he's a quick man. 17 seconds, though. He can't do it all on his own, and nobody is helping him out just for now. Not at all. Uh, 123, the Colombian right at the back, the 30-year-old uh, Colombian. Won a stage of the uh, Giro d'Italia and a lone win uh, back in uh, 2012. 
He beat uh, Mallory into um, into the second place that day. So strong riders in the breakaway. So Henrico Jensen, Jaregi, Rosetto, Rubiano, all riders uh, combining well. Uh, just as we see more of the green jerseys coming towards the front with uh, Kokar on the wheel. Yeah, uh, plenty of green jerseys with interest here. Cairo Rail also joining with Europe Car in their green, and of course Breton Session Verimental with the black and green as well. Uh, chased of driven on by Danny McClay at the moment but 19 seconds it's holding with 3.8 to go and I think these guys provided they don't try and lean on each other or start getting spiteful have a chance um, certainly of a top five finish every single one of them because there's five of them here uh, but who's going to take it well, kicking off right now is Rubiano, who tries to put in a bit of pace. Uh, joining the front is uh, Jeregi from uh, AG2 Ala Mondial. And they're grinding and peddling squares, Europe car. I think they've let this slip through their grasp with 18 seconds to go. Uh, the rise and fall of the terrain is not going to help them. And whatever they put into this chase down right now is energy, unfortunately, that they're not going to have at the end. Well, they came back, uh, got their team together, came up to the front. They put a rider on the front. He's now gone. On, which leaves two riders in front of uh, Brian Cocar. So there's not a lot of fi firepower. When you consider two riders, five in front, you'd expect the uh, breakaway to, to go further in front. And it's a difficult time. It is very doable. Um, 16 seconds. Uh, we're starting to see Caru Al Madrazo come up towards the front. But uh, where's Bretan Sesh? Where have they disappeared to? They started to ride and now, now just sat back. One second gained in about 200 metres. It looks like this breakaway might well have their fun, except if they start to stall and start asking others to do the work. That's Rosetto from uh, Co Coffinus, who just flicks his arm out and says, come on, let's get this done. Nick doesn't really want to take the front. Has a very short turn, the man from Cult Energy in the black. Very short turn indeed. Leans on Yul Jensen, almost gets caught out on that uh, little technical roundabout, as you can see. It gets more technical towards the line as well. On this lead in we have several um, switchback not exactly switchbacks 90 degree turns to be made along the way not just roundabouts but of course uh, uh, left and right handers as well most of them come in a, a, at the end of this long straight under the railway bridge they'll go after the Flam Rouge, that's when it gets properly technical. And right now, some being found out. Nick looks like he's struggling just to get back in after taking his turn. Maybe he doesn't have the sprint energy that he needs towards the end. And I'm afraid there's going to be a deficit for some of these guys further back as well. 11 seconds, but with 2Ks to go, they're going to have to push, but they can't. They've been doing so much work to tee up. Brian Kokar have Team Europe car in the green that I think they're going to stall. Well, I was going to, just about to say there, it's uh, touch and go now, only 11 seconds, but Brian Kokar is sitting second wheel, he's got one rider in front of him, Branco Car just flicked his elbow he's trying to get Madrazo and uh, Movistar to come through to help out the riders from Cult Energy have come up towards the front, this is going to be very tight and it looks as if it's one Europe car rider in front of Brian Car that's left to try and bring these five riders back Well, it's in spinning distance right now uh, clock goes out, possibly a little bit wrong, but uh, as you can see it's uh, very, very close at hand and uh, doesn't like the look of it. I don't think Rubiano had a look behind, and I'm not surprised. Five riders then, and it looks like the take might well happen, in which case Brian Kokar is going to have his fun right now. Here's the helicopter shot. What's the gap? To my mind, it's about five seconds only. So essentially all together right now. And I think that's almost a gift for Kokar as Cult Energy come up towards the front and try and engage in something today. Maybe they got other fish to fry. And I think it's Vendegaard right now. One kilometre to go now and uh, Cult Energy come towards the front. They had one rider in this front group, Carl Hennick. So I'm not too sure that he'll be happy at the end of the day to look behind to see his uh, his team bringing the race all back together. So uh, it's uh, Linus Gerdeman that just goes on to the wheel of the Cofidis rider. So it's all together now inside the last kilometre. Wow, and these are those left and right turns that we were talking about. The final turn, by the way, is a left-hander, uh, which will bring him to the 350 metres to go marker. And they're spreading wide across the road. And it, it, here's the technical nature of the approach. It's a difficult one to master, and especially if you want to get yourself into a lead-out train formation can't quite do it and I think that's uh, Manu as well for uh, over 93 who's left it very very late so the 
final curve is just about to come up and they're grinding. I told you there was this nasty little kick. This is about uh, 400 metres to go, Marker. And here we go. Kokar is in the frame. Can he possibly do it all alone? Colombia are also involved here and it's Duque that hits the front. Duque versus Kokar with Venturini as well from uh, Confidus. Uh, very late on, the camera shaken out by uh, one of those sleeping policemen. And it is over 93 that come up and hit the front. This is good work by them. So who's going to manage to get this man back? Absolutely nobody by the looks of things, is it? They pick it up very, very late. That's uh, Svendegaard, I believe, at the line, but it's going elsewhere. And Oba deliver at the line and cause a huge shock here. Some big sprint names got found out late on. They can't believe it. Quite frankly, neither can the crowd. Very late look at that final turn. Goodness me, five hours of racing and what a finish.